and select edit and value and we will change this to gross amount and select OK and we also want to add a border to the right of that to close it off so we'll just add the border to the right there and there it is the borders there and that looks pretty good so we have our detail headers they're looking pretty nice let's go ahead and collapse that and let's right click the table and add a row and we're gonna keep this as a normal row and we're gonna repeat the variable item number and this means that for every instance of the variable item number the row is gonna repeat and this of course will be our detail lines and you always want to make sure that you have something that will repeat the detail lines and always want to make sure it's just a normal row and not anything else because it's gonna split uh, by page if you have more than a certain number of detail lines. So select OK and to this row we're going to right click it and select add cell and give it a fixed width of 5500 and we're going to put some borders on this we will give it a top border solid 5 and we will give it a left border with a solid 5 and select OK and the cell will have its border. Go ahead and disregard this for now. That's not, not a problem. We'll get rid of that shortly. We'll right click the cell and add document component and a table. And to this table we're going to add a row. Select OK. And to this particular row we're going to add a cell. And this cell is going to be the first cell that we had created previously. And it's going to have the total of 500 just like the cell we created earlier and to this cell we're going to add a paragraph we'll go ahead and left align that and select OK and as you can see we have all of these rows now here and the cells borders are showing appropriately and to this paragraph we're going to right click and add the variable and we're going to add the variable quantity shipped and select OK there it is so we're going to and in fact it might be a good idea to right click this cell select borders and this will make it look a little bit nicer too and select a right border of five and you see that looks even better it gives you another clean kind of look you know you can have the border here you can take it off you can remove the borders from this particular cell above it's really all depends on how you like it to look but I like the way it looks here in fact, just to make it look a little bit nicer, let's give it a little padding. I think 25 is always good all the way around. There you go. That's a nice looking, uh, some nice looking padding there. And what we can do is we can go ahead and just copy that and just continue to go there. And then we can, instead of shipped, we can do quantity order here. That'll work just nicely. We can copy and paste that. Note that the cells don't line up. That's because this particular cell, we uh, made it a thousand earlier. So we can do that. And then instead of that, it was item number. There we go. Looking good. Let's go ahead and drag and copy again. This particular cell was 2000. So we'll add that. There we go. And this particular variable was item description. There it is and we can do that one more time we'll do it with the smaller one copy and first let's change the cell and this was 750 that looks good and we'll edit that value change it to unit price that looks good and we will do it one more time and that matches up nicely and this is gross amount value gross amount and it's good so it's looking solid and again it doesn't look exactly as it's going to look uh, but that looks pretty good there and when we'll output it to a PDF here shortly you'll see that it, it does look really quite nice and it does have multiple pages so if you scroll through the pages you'll see it eventually there's a cutoff point and on page three it looks like and see page three of three and you go back page two of three page one of three so our page thing is working that's good so we have that 
let's go ahead and add our totals. We want to add our totals beneath here. And we're going to add them probably only to the last page. That would make sense. So let's go ahead and collapse this. We could add the totals to this particular detail table, but that's a little tougher to do. I suggest we just create a box. Um, and we can do that add document component, create a box. And we will uncheck within document and absolute position it. We're going to do this well down the form here at the very bottom, near the very bottom, on the last page. To act as somewhat of a footer. And we'll select OK. We can right click the box, select add document component table. And again, you can of course edit the description of the box if you feel as you need to. And select OK. And to this table, we can right click that and select add row. We're just going to keep this normal, add row. And to the row, we're going to add a cell. And this cell is going to act as a bottom border. So this is going to act as somewhat of a line for us. And we can give it the maximum width. And then we're going to want the top style of this border to be 5. That's pretty good. And in fact, you know what? Let's make it really thick. And let's just make it a solid, thick border all the way around. There you go. So if we look all the way over, there we go. On our final page, we'll see we have ourselves a really solid, thick border that's going to be beneath our descriptions, our, our detail lines. So all of our information, this will break it, and then we'll see the totals beneath it. So that's just kind of a style, look, feel issue that uh, I happen to think looks good. And we have that. And let's go ahead and add our total information. And to do that, we're going to add another row. And we can give this row a description if, if need be. And this will be our subtotal. So again, you can add descriptions on most of these components, tables, rows, and boxes. And to the subtotal row, row we're going to add a cell. And first, this cell is going to kick over our information really far to the right. That's what we want to do first. So we'll move it 3,700. That should be pretty good. And that'll work. And in fact, before we continue, let's go ahead and add some space between these top two cells. Let's add a spacing row. We'll give it a fixed amount of about 50. And we can just drag that up beneath these two rows. And that'll help us distinguish better. So we have that cell, and that's for spacing. Let's go ahead and add the uh, cell that we're going to use to place our subtotal text. And that's 800. We'll give it some borders. We'll go with a top border and a left border. That'll work. And five apiece should do. Padding. We'll give it some padding of about 10 each. 10 is good on the top and the bottom. All right. And let's see we have it right there. And to this cell, we'll go ahead and add a paragraph. And we can, yeah, we'll add the alignment as a left align. And to the paragraph, we can add text, text value. And we will type subtotal. And there it is. We have our subtotal. And what we can do is we can drag and copy the cell. And this, we can edit the cell and add a border to the right as well. There we go. And we have that. So what we want to add is, of course, remove the subtotal text and add the variable for subtotal. And there it is. And you can adjust the, and if we zoom in a little bit more, we can adjust this to the right by selecting the paragraph alignment and adjusting this over to the right. That's one way of doing it, certainly. And we'll keep it like that. A lot of people like to right align their totals. So we have that. And we can then drag this row and do it one more time. And this time edit it and make it the total. There we go. And we'll change this text to total as well. Select OK. 
And we'll go ahead and change this cell color a little bit just to mix things up. We'll do the, uh, the gray look we've been doing. And that'll work. And we will change this font to white. There we go. I like the way that looks. And to this particular cell, all we'll need to do is change to the total. And we're also going to add a bottom border to it. And we'll add a bottom border below that also. And there we go. And in fact, we forgot to add our right style border to this cell. There we go. Thought I had done that, but it looks like I didn't. There you go. No wonder that wasn't showing up. There. So we have our totals like so. If we zoom out a little bit, and let's go ahead and give you the real bird's eye view here. We'll switch the view. Kind of spread it out. So you're gonna, it's gonna look, we can switch it up a lot. This is a real bird's eye view of it. That's kind of what we're looking like on page three. Page two is looking like this. And page one is looking like this. So you can mess around with it as much as you see fit and change it as, as you please. Obviously, not everything is exactly the way you may want it. But let's go ahead and take a look at this in a PDF. To do so, we can go to the main menu and select Run and Output. And we will save this as a sample. There we go. Get the caps lock figured out there. And when we click Save, the PDF will appear. And there is the PDF. So the PDF displaying, we can see we've got our logo, we have our shipping information, our invoice header, we have our detail lines, and if we scroll down the pages, our detail lines continue and continue and continue, and then we have our total on the last page. So again, we have ourselves a pretty good looking invoice here built in the document template from scratch. And we've gone through most of the steps that you'll normally encounter when building an invoice or most forms with the document template. So we have created successfully a new project using the document template. We have shown you how to create a project using the form template in a previous video. So it's really up to you which method you prefer. The document template has the advantage of repeatability as we see here in the detail lines and pagination. It lines up exactly where you tell it to, but it's also a little bit more complicated. There's a bit more of a learning curve. And of course, the benefit of the form template is that it's easy to use. You can use it with the publishing tools you know, and it's very easy to modify and place information onto the form. So it's really up to you, but either way, whether you use a form template or a document template, you can create your form or report easily and at your convenience in the eForms Composer.